Welcome back. Now in this segment, we are going to put the spotlight on payments fintech startup Innovity Payments. A collaborative commerce platform, Innovity has raised about $75 million so far from investors, which include Panthera Growth Partners, Patni Family Office, among others. Now, according to the company, it is the largest provider of payment solutions to enterprise merchants with a 76% share in all payments happening in this particular segment. Rajiv Agarwal, Innovity's founder and CEO, joins us now. Rajiv, welcome to the show and thank you for your time. Let me quickly start by asking you, uh, you know, this recently you got RBI is not to operate as a payment aggregator. Uh, we understand that is still an in-principle approval. When are you expecting the final note? And you know what would this license mean for your company? Yeah. So firstly, we thanks a lot for inviting us to the show. Uh, happy to be here. Um, so as you rightly said, we have received an in-principle nod. Uh, so that's how the process works with RBI. Uh, the, in the first phase, it's an in-principle nod, and then uh, we are supposed to uh, undergo certain uh, qualifications on the audit, et cetera, which is a period of about six months. At the end of it, uh, uh, that converts into a full license. Uh, so yes, uh, that's how it is. And that's that's the way it is for all companies who have received an in-principle not currently. Uh, what it means for us, uh, I think that's, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that happen. So one is that clearly it's a strong endorsement that Innovity uh, is carrying out innovation uh, responsibly for its customers uh, because uh, uh, ultimately we are dealing with uh, the money of the consumer, the money of the merchant, and it's important that whatever solutions we provide, they are uh, they are operating with extremely high integrity in a safe environment and providing uh, the value uh, in a responsible manner. So that's the first part. The second thing is that uh, now being a licensed entity, there are certain kinds of services and certain kinds of access to data that become uh, available to us, which would not be there to uh, unlicensed entity. And that allows us to create uh, products which are superior to probably what uh, uh, our competition, which is not licensed, uh, would be able to do. And that therefore automatically has a business impact, both in terms of revenues as well as in terms of margins. Uh, all right. Hi, Rajiv. Uh, Arunati here. So now, Innovity recently got RBI's not to operate as a uh, payment aggregator, but you've also raised $75 million so far, including the $45 million recently in a Series A D round led by Panthera Growth. So uh, what is the current valuation of the company and how do you plan to use these funds? So our uh, post money valuation is uh, two hundred and fifty million dollars, um, and uh, how we intend to use the funds is broadly in uh, three areas. One is that uh, uh, we have been uh, looking at a lot of expansion in the mid market segment. By mid market, I mean the regional retailers, which are not these large uh, enterprises, but the regional retailers, and uh, uh, they they are they are uh, suffering on one side with a uh, lot of competition from online. On the other side, a lot of competition from the organized retailers becoming larger, and therefore uh, they need. They need access to good technology solutions, which can help them to compete better. So, uh, so first is going to be a lot of market expansion. The second is we are looking at a lot of new products being introduced uh, uh, in broadly three areas. One is we're looking at a lot of purchase tools being created on top of UPI. Uh, traditionally, a lot of our, uh, our development has happened in carts. We're looking at a lot of uh, development on UPI. Second is we are looking at uh, building together tools which help these small merchants come uh, and become a part of the ONDC platform, which is shaping up. Uh, which will help them to get discovered better. And the third is uh, is looking at expansion into categories like healthcare, wellness, and maybe over time, even hospitality and uh, uh, into restaurants. The third utilization is that there are some strategic assets that we've identified and uh, right. we would be keeping aside some small pool of money for some acquisitions. What kind of, sorry, acquisitions are you looking at? Anything on the table that you could disclose to us? Uh, no, not right now, but uh, hopefully we'll get to know in the next few weeks. Uh, but yes, we are looking at acquisitions broadly okay. in three areas. Either they can give us access to okay. distribution or they can give us access to technology. All right. And, and what is the volume and value of payments that you're currently processing? Could you tell us about that and your current market share uh, in merchant payments overall? Sure. So uh, let me try to put this in context. So, uh, so like I said, we uh, classically have been very strong in the uh, card payment space. 
uh, where of course now UPI is also getting added on. In the card payment space offline, if you look at it, uh, uh, in the enterprise retailers, and by enterprise retailers, I mean the super large enterprises, which are you know, six, seven, eight billion dollar uh, companies uh, with Pan India presents uh, um, the likes of Reliance, the likes of Madura, and so on and so forth. So, if you take the super large enterprises in the fashion, grocery, uh, healthcare, and electronics category, then we have roughly a 75% market share of all digital payments that happen there. Uh, this roughly contributes to about anything between nine and a half to ten billion dollars annually. Uh, UPI is a small portion of it these days, but it is also growing very rapidly. We process these transactions from more than 2,000 plus cities, and they're close to about 90 million unique consumers who come and touch our system on an annual basis. All right, and you've also earlier said that the company will evaluate an IPO over the next 24 months. Any update you could provide to us on that front? Yeah, sure. So for us, uh, you know, uh, it'll be exciting to do two, three things. One is that uh, so we are looking at uh, seeing how we can take our revenue to a hundred million dollar range, and uh, take it to hundred million dollar range while having raised less than hundred million dollars in capital. So that would be exciting for us uh, because that would mean that we have actually solidly created value. Um, uh, we believe there are two, three factors that we need to look at. One is that uh, we want to hit an EBITDA of anything between 45 to 50 crores a quarter. Uh, we believe that's the right kind of a scale to go ahead and get listed uh, on the stock markets. Uh, we believe that would happen when we are close to $100 million kind of a range or where we are close to about, say, 150 to 160 crores uh, of, uh, per quarter of revenue. Uh, today, our enterprise business is already generating anything between uh, four to five crores a quarter will generate about eight to 10 crores a quarter by the end of the year. So we see that uh, by uh, sometime in the calendar year 25, on a quarterly basis, we would hit these targets, 45 to 50 crores of EBITDA between 150 to 170 crores of revenue. We believe that's that's the that sort of goal. And that's as soon as we hit that uh, target, we would just go ahead and uh, you know start the process uh, for an IPO. Uh, Rajiv, briefly, before we let you go, you know, a lot of focus for the fintech companies, especially in the payment space, has been around the regulations coming out from RBI. Uh, we saw them uh, banning extending credit lines through prepaid payment instruments. That was a bit of a shock for the BNPL players. That's also an area you operate in. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about what to do with MDR rates, again, something that impacts you very closely. Uh, your quick final thoughts before we wrap this up. Uh, I think we believe... Uh, uh... The regulator is really putting in place the kind of guardrails that are necessary for innovation to happen at scale and responsibly in the country. So we are very, very supportive of the uh, kind of actions that uh, the regulator has been taking. Uh, because it's, it's finally we have to realize that we're dealing with, uh, with the money of consumers, with the money of businesses. And it's important that there be, uh, you know, financial services work on the concept of trust. And trust happens only when uh, you know the service that has been promised to you is delivered at in a transparent, fair manner and at the right cost. And that can't happen if uh, if there is uh, uh, if, if guardrails are not put in place. So if you ask us, maybe it's a contrary view to what you would hear from other startups. But uh, we are very, very supportive of the kind of regulation that is being brought into place. We believe right. yes, temporarily it may slow down things a bit. But the kind of solution that will emerge from this would be very responsible solutions and there'll be solutions which will scale up and last. Right, Raji. So you support that move. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. But we're completely out of time and we wish you all the best going forward. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. It is Friday and it's time to take a look at all the notable deals that took place this week. The Indian startup ecosystem witnessed a total of 22 deals valued at over $160 million as per venture intelligence. Meanwhile, since the start of 2022, the startup space has seen 861 deals valued at over $20 billion. <clears throat> Well, speaking of some of the interesting deals this week, space tech startup Skyroot raised about $51 million from GIC and others. Akshay Kalpa Organic raised $20 million from British International Investment, Low Capital, Venture Dairy, as well as others. And meanwhile, instant gold loan provider Rupik, technology connectivity company iBus and fintech startup Gromo raised anywhere between $11 to $16 million each. And with that, it is a wrap on this edition of Startup Street from Ritu and me. Many thanks for watching.